talk about natural born rivals. The Soundcore Liberty 4, which I gave a pass just a few weeks ago, sad but true. And this thing right here, the One More Arrow, here to challenge the Soundcore for supremacy and bragging rights if it can. Now, both of these offer their top of the line versions of noise cancellation, audio tuning, design, app customization, and <clears throat> uh, spatial audio. Yeah. Just so you don't go into this video with high expectations, guys, the spoiler here is I didn't like that feature on the Liberty 4 and with the Arrow, uh, yeah, same story. But there's a possible tiebreaker here. The Arrow is cheaper, much cheaper, but is that enough to win this comparison? Well, I guess you're gonna have to watch this to find out, guys. My name is Aaron and welcome to this comparison video. Let's do this. <laughs> So real quickly, let's check out the specs on the Aero. This thing retails for $110 versus $150 on the Liberty 4. It comes in two different colors, black and white. Bluetooth 5.2 with support for AAC and SBC. If you're looking for LDAC or the newer Bluetooth 5.3, the Soundcore is the one to get. But if you're looking for Aptex, neither of these have it, just in case you're wondering. On the Aero, just like on the Soundcore, there's multi-point, mono mode, as well as wear detection. Battery life between the two is very similar. It's nice and strong on the Aero. 6.3 hours during my time of testing, 65% volume with ANC on. Uh, there's IPX5 water dust resistance, and there's also wireless charging at the bottom, USB-C. I'll tell you what, the manufacturing lines on this, the quality, how it's put together, the plastics are really, really nice, very close to the sound core. In, in fact, probably something's better or on par. I really like how the stems are long enough and easy enough to hold. Matte plastics are awesome because when your hands are greasy or dirty, they don't show and it's also easy to grip. Now, in the business end of things, there's a 10 millimeter driver in here doing all the grunt work, porting sound through this oval mesh tip right there, as you can see. And replacing the ear tips are decently fast, actually quite fast, especially once you line it up. And the silicone is really nice and soft and supple. Wear detection window is right there. There are three mics per side that handles phone calls and noise cancellation. Um, really, really nice and light. And I, I really like the feel of this thing. And since we're here, and so you can see, by the way, the cavity, really easy to clean if you need to run a Q-tip through it. And you can see also the LED status light is opaque through the plastic. Since we're here, let's do the shake test, hold the lid open. Oh yes, pass with flying colors, I'll tell you what. And by the way, you can see this on the side too, how the lid stays open. I think it looks like some modern laptops when you open it, it raises the case itself on a flat surface so you can easily uh, grab or remove the ear tips or earbuds at an angle, really nice stuff. It kind of reminds me of some kind of, I don't know, hibernation pot or something. Really pretty interesting design. The One More app is super clean with everything important accessible on the home screen itself without having to scroll around or having to find them in other screens or tabs or whatever. And here at the top, you can see battery levels for the case as well as the earphones. And then below that, listening modes where you can toggle between off or transparency. Transparency, there's no levels, just on and off. Uh, active noise cancellation, there are four levels. There's strong, mild, wind noise reduction, and adaptive, where you let the system figure it out for itself. If you want to customize the touch controls, you tap uh, custom settings. Now, I think to prevent accidental taps, one more skip giving us single taps and gave us double and triple taps instead. I would prefer if they gave us all the options and if we didn't like how they work, there would have been an option to disable any or all of them. That would have solved the problem altogether. Now, a new feature, let's back out of this. A new feature introduced this time is Smart Loudness. And I'll talk more about this later on, but basically it dynamically raises bass and treble at low volumes. Back to the home screen, we can also access the EQ. There are 12 presets on a really plain Jane looking screen. And there's also a really equally bland looking 10 band EQ, which is still more than the eight band EQ on the sound core. Now, again, back out to the home screen here, spatial audio is activated with a simple toggle switch. You just let the system figure it out. Well, welcome to the outdoor Bluetooth range test. And I am jamming to some black keys doing everlasting light. And no, I'm not winded because I'm fit as a fiddle. <laughs> now I've been doing a lot of takes, uh, taking these earbuds on, on runs around the backyard here. Whew. I'll tell you what, it's not easy, but I do it for you guys. But anyways, I'm gonna take these Bluetooth 5.2 arrows away from my phone and see how uh, strong the connection is. So the song is playing on my Flip 3. I'm gonna walk around the back 
towards the side of my house here. Where I'm standing is around 25 feet. And I'm guessing right around here is where we'll get a uh, signal. There you go. It's around uh, 35, 36 feet. So it's not too bad, right on specs actually. But at this point, there's absolutely no music playing, zero. Not even a sputter, it's not even trying. I am noticing one trend. Uh, as I've tested the Liberty 4, the Arrows, and some of the other brands uh, that don't have branded uh, SOCs like Qualcomm, when they're out of signal, like far away, I've noticed they have not given me tones at all. I could walk as far out as all the way down to the road. Nothing happens, but I can guarantee you once I hit back into range, you'll hear, like in this case, bing bong, your typical one more uh, soundtrack. There's nothing yet. I'm not getting a tone. There you go. I just got a tone. Bing bong. And playing music again. So anyways, let's talk about fit. These, <laughs> they look like earrings, don't it? They're long. The stems are long. Uh, in black, they might not stand out as much. I'm going to try running with these. It's really slippery. Look at all the leaves. Oh, oh my goodness. And the steps here is slippery. I know that for a fact because I almost died earlier on this. Um, if you want to run, these are not it. Light running, gym work, it's okay for brisk walking. Uh, but heavy pounding would definitely uh, shift these a lot. You want, you definitely want earbuds or earphones with wingtips or ear hooks or something like that. Not these. They do shift some. Woo! I'm still winded from the past few runs, man. Tell you what. But um, definitely comfortable. I don't feel any pressure points as I'm doing this. Um, nice and solid. So let's head down to the road and test the mic on these. Check out the fog all the way down there and all the way up there. It's really awesome. I like this kind of weather. And here comes some traffic coming up this way. The roads are wet, so the tire slaps. Uh, as they slap on the road, it's going to produce some interesting sounds that will challenge the noise cancellation besides the engine sounds. Then we'll hit it also at higher pitch uh, frequencies. How does that handle it? Not too bad, not too bad at all. And I'm not sure if this will show up uh, in this recording because I've done this a few times. And it seems like my voice um, sounds like there's an echo chamber effect or some kind of reverb added to it, like it's echoey. Don't you think so? Like a surround, like I'm talking in a room or something, like right, a really small room. So I'm gonna keep talking as traffic passes through. How does that car sound too to you? It's not bad. I like these. You can definitely use these on the road, by the roadside, get a phone call. And your listeners should be perfectly fine. But the echo reverb thing is kind of interesting. Another thing to note too is when you get phone calls and if you're in noise cancellation mode, these things don't turn, uh, turn that off and go into pass through. I like it when earbuds do that because, you know, it's for safety reasons when you get a phone call want to be able to hear your surroundings better. At first glance, both of these look similar, but in terms of execution, that's where they significantly differ. For example, the Liberty 4 went with the tried and true and honestly perfected to a T sliding fidget of a lid. It's really awesome and it's so much easier to access the innards one-handed compared to the Aero, which went with a two-handed clamshell design. And in terms of the design, I find the Aero much more interesting. It almost looks like a prop from 2001 The Space Odyssey. And also, for what it's worth, the one more is also thinner and lighter, while the sound core is better made, if only just. For some reason, only known to one more designers, the Aero has freakishly long stems compared to the Liberty 4. I'm not sure why it's there. Maybe you can take this to the restaurant, listen to your tunes, eat a burger, and then clean your teeth with it. <laughs> That's a plus, I guess. Now, its rival, on the other hand, seems to better balance its weight in your ear, feeling more secure and comfortable. But again, let me point this out. The difference is minute. I'm really nitpicking at this point. Let's talk controls. The window here is one more, but only because of how much I hate the squeeze the stem button setup on the Liberty 4. Because anytime you try to adjust the earphones, like I just did, I tried adjusting it, it activated a command. As much as I hate touch controls, the Aero, comparatively, is a much welcome relief. I can't believe I said that. 
Let me tell you something. Ella Fitzgerald and Louis B. Armstrong. You put them together in a the studio, they make some amazing stuff. You should definitely check it out. And never have they sounded so warm and full of depth than on the Arrows, especially when you compare it with the Liberty 4 with LDAC on. Remember, the Arrows don't have LDAC. Now, there have been firmware updates since I shot the Liberty 4 video, but the problem that I mentioned before persists where higher notes of voices or string instruments start to sound peaky at anything above 60% volume. Bass is also smoother on the one more, although sub bass intensity is felt a little bit more in the sound core. It's also great that both of these have strong amplifications so you can hear your tunes regardless of whether you're laying at a low 10% volume or all the way up at max. And if that's not enough, one more has a feature called Smart Loudness that dynamically boosts the lows and highs at whatever volume you're listening to. And I don't think though, personally, it helps much, especially if you care about preserving the balance of your tunes. Plus, that's what the gain is for in the EQ. But I can see how this can help people who don't care about manually playing with the EQ. This is done automatically, so that's pretty darn cool. Or for those who physically have trouble hearing those frequencies in the first place. The Soundcore Liberty 4 has heart rate sensors to measure whether you're dead or alive. With the Arrow, you're gonna have to do this old school. You know, like this. How hard can this be? And then we come to the elephant in the room. The soon every brand's gonna have it because we all sheeple and like to follow everybody else feature for better or for worse, spatial audio. And I was hoping there'll be some discernible difference between the way One More does it and how Soundcore does it and how they tune how audio dances around your head and everything. But sorry to break it to y'all. I ain't buying this technology just yet. The source audio, the way these things do it, is they play it as a whole bundle of sound, like left, front, right, center, and everything, as you rotate your head. So like if I turn my head left, all the sound is right here. Maybe there's some bleed to the left and right, and that's about it. Rather than true 360 reality audio, where each channel remains in its own virtual space. So as your head turns, it feels like you're actually centered in a room with the sound coming at you from all different directions. This feature is very much in beta, I'll tell you what. And in the next generation, either needs to wow or bow out. You like that? I'm like an everyday awesome wordsmith. Soundcore's noise cancellation is not Bose or Sony levels, but it is solid and is a marked improvement over the already strong Liberty 3 Pro. Unfortunately, the arrow doesn't quite rise to the challenge here. Granted, low frequency suppression, passive seal transparency, they're all good, but instead of things like dulled conversations, you know, the kind of thing you want in, say, a noisy office environment, it lets in like a higher lilt from voices than the Liberty 4 by quite a lot. And it is quite annoying. And I hope they fix this in a firmware update. And if you're wondering about background hiss, well, there is some where noise cancellation is set to high, especially. And so for that case, I prefer to leave it in auto. And then the system seems to keep noise cancellation in mid or low most of the time. So that incessant hissing doesn't like rear its ugly head as much. Without doubt, Soundcore has one of the best app experiences out there right now. And while one more is quickly catching up, there are areas where it really needs to work on like right now, pronto, like the EQ screen. I'm gonna put them up side by side so you can see for yourselves. One looks really nice, right? And the other looks like it was slapped together by a middle schooler trying to barely pass for art class or something. But still, mega props to one more for actually listening and responding quickly to their fans and customers. We asked for a customizable EQ. They didn't use to have it. They gave it to us. Remember Sound ID? Yeah, precisely. People complain about it so much. One more listen, and we haven't seen that thing pass one product cycle. So bravo, one more. Bravo. One important area to bring up is the overall speed of the unit. Like how quickly the earphone processes touch or press commands into actions on the phone. To me, the Pixel Buds Pro, hands down, is the fastest in the West. You basically like think it, it happens. Followed closely by, guess what, the Liberty 4. Comparatively though, the Arrow feels pedestrian, even though it really performs just as good as almost every Bluetooth 5.2 or even 5.3 earphone out there. You know, it is amusing and sad at the same time to see how many Soundcore products are starting to not be seen as cheaper alternatives to top end rivals anymore. Because not too long ago, y'all remember this, they were undercutting the competition like left and right, offering tons of features, great performance for a low price, making all those big brands quake in their boots. But coincidentally, on the flip side now, 
This is exactly what One More seems to be doing better than Soundcore. How about that? Like that's a huge shift in status quo. I came into this with little expectation that One More will actually sweep this comparison, but I'm honestly surprised with the final results because it takes a lot to dethrone the Liberty 4. I'll give it that, especially on paper. And after adding up and averaging out the scores, I can only point to one of the two possibilities here. A, Soundcore's decision to feature Dump the Liberty 4 made it lose the audio sparkle that made it so prominent and so special as recently as last year's models. Or B, one more has actually caught up with Soundcore where it matters, like SQ, day-to-day -day performance, and price. Or maybe it's both of those reasons are at play here. So the Soundcore, as we all know it from the last video I did, has a gear up score of 7.9 out of 10. The One More Arrow, it nets an identical score of 7.9 out of 10. And I mean identical, guys. Even the unrounded scores are a 7.91666666666 respectively. So the fight is on, yo, and I can't wait to see who wins in the next generation in 2023. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you like to see more videos like this, if you like my content, show your support, thumbs up if you like it, comment nicely down below, subscribe, mash and kill the button, share it with your friends and family, visit me on Patreon, or if you like to drop me a tip or something or buy me a cup of coffee, there's a super thanks button down below. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here, guys. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? The world needs it more than ever if you haven't seen the news and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. Peace out and God bless. Adios.